Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. Over and over and over again, I've heard from the community that the games I play are just way too hard. Whether it be the Pathfinder, Pillars of Eternity, or King Arthur series, I see comments from people saying that the systems are too complex and players have trouble adjusting. Making matters even worse, some new players to CRPGs are recommending games that were created over 15 years ago, and installing them on current systems can be a difficult task. In this video, I am going to cover six modern games that are authentic CRPGs, but also have systems which should be easy to understand understand for new players. I won't list them in any particular order, so you can just choose the one that works best for you. Here at Slandered Gaming, we focus on CRPGs, so if that kind of content interests you, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content. We also live stream on both YouTube and Twitch. I don't like being predictable, so let's get the obvious option out of the way and kick things off with Baldur's Gate 3. In this game, you play as a character who has been kidnapped by mind flayers and had a tadpole implanted into your brain. You quickly escape from your captors, but are then confronted with how to safely remove the tadpole from your skull. BG3 has won a ton of awards for good reason. From a production value standpoint, this is the best CRPG you can buy. Everything you do will look absolutely outstanding, and unlike many of the games on this list, all BG3 NPCs are fully voice acted. These voice acting performances are outstanding as well, and the game boasts several memorable characters. Baldur's Gate 3 uses a modified version of D&D 5e mechanics. Most of the modifications revolve around making things easier for the player, and that makes the game one of the best ways to get introduced to D&D. Developer Larian Studios has set up the game in such a way that you have to purposely try to create a completely incompetent build. Making things even more interesting, later this year, BG3 will receive mod support. The game already has a very healthy modding community, and this will make it even easier to create content that will make the experience smoother for new players. All the way around, it's hard to go wrong with BG3 being your first CRPG, but I do see a couple of drawbacks. First, the game is long, 100% completion playthroughs, probably taking over 100 hours. If you are used to console games that are usually 20 to 40 hours, this might be a tall order. Also, in my opinion, Baldur's Gate 3 doesn't have much replay value. An evil aligned run significantly pales in comparison to what you get when playing as a good aligned character. In addition, there's not enough variation in how a good aligned run ends to justify more than a couple of playthroughs. Therefore, the case can be made that some of the other games on this list will be a better bang for your buck. I am sure there will be people in the comments who disagree, and obviously this entire video is subjective, but those are my overall thoughts. Again, the initial experience of playing Baldur's Gate 3 is spectacular and highly recommended for anybody who loves RPGs. Next on the list is Wasteland 3. Some of you want to experience a CRPG, but have no interest in a world filled with elves, dwarves, and goblins. This game throws all of that out the window and places you in the role of two Arizona Rangers who seek the patronage of the Patriarch. He in turn tasks you with finding his three children and forcing them to come back home, subsequently restoring order to his domain. Wasteland 3 has a fantastic sense of dark humor that permeates throughout the entire adventure. The characters you meet are fascinating and very entertaining to interact with. It's also a real joy to dive into the mechanics. The game uses a unique system, so there's no advantage in having played D&D or Pathfinder tabletop games. There's a ton of different ways to set up your squad, and seeing that ingenuity pay off in combat feels very rewarding. Completing all the content in Wasteland 3 will take you around 60 hours, which is still longer than most console games, but at the same time it's not the daunting task BG3 might be for some players. There are a couple of large DLC expansions available for the game if you are looking for more content. I never played them, so I cannot speak to their level of quality, but my community has spoken positively about them. Romance isn't an option in this game, but it also doesn't feel like something that is missing. You manually create four out of your six squad mates, and those characters are silent, so you don't have the degree of party banner that's available in other games on this list, 
and romances wouldn't make sense. There are a couple of off-putting difficulty spikes in the game, but nothing that I believe will really deter new players. Unfortunately, Wasteland 3 does suffer from similar issues to Baldur's Gate 3 from a replayability standpoint. There are a few different endings, but the variety in ones where you didn't purposely tank your game aren't very distinctive. After a couple of runs, you have probably seen just about everything there is to see. That being said, it's a fantastic ride and a great way for new players to ease themselves into the game. Next up, we have Tyranny. In this game, you play as someone who works on behalf of a tyrant who is forcefully subjugating a new land. Tyranny boasts one of the best intros in all of gaming. You spend the first 30 minutes making choices about how your character reacted during the invasion of the tears. There's no opportunity to be a good guy here or to stop what is occurring. You essentially must do this from the standpoint of someone loyal to the tyrant. Your choices will open up some areas on the map while rendering others completely closed. There is a deep amount of reactivity throughout the entire game to these choices, making the first 30 minutes arguably the most impactful portion of the entire game, even if you decide to take a good aligned route, which is definitely available to you. Speaking of which, Tyranny has a lot of replayability because the evil, good, and neutral aligned paths are equally valid, and all of them will provide you with unique content. Evil aligned runs are layered, since they are different characters you might choose to side with, so two evil playthroughs could turn out very differently. Another great thing about this game is that the leveling system is very unique. You'll make choices in the beginning regarding some of your stats, but once you get out in the world, they will increase based off what you do. Kill more enemies with bows and will increase your bow ranking, or unlock more chests and it will increase your subterfuge. It's a smooth process to get the exact type of character you want. Out of all the games I have listed thus far, Tyranny is the easiest, and that also makes it a much smoother ride for new players. Even if your builds aren't particularly good, as long as you keep your gear up to date and use basic tactics, getting through the campaign should be a breeze. It's also very short, only taking 40 hours to complete, even if you 100% all of the content, DLC is included. Unfortunately, this also speaks to a major weakness with the game, it feels incomplete. Obsidian had to rush through development, and consequently Tyranny feels like it could use an extra 10 hours, or frankly a sequel, to really make good on all of the lore questions it raises. The game did not sell well, and unfortunately, that sequel will probably never happen, so Tyranny fans have essentially been left hanging. There's also no romance, and unlike Wasteland 3, it feels like this game should have had that option. Party members Verse, Barrack, and Ebb, most especially, are characters that I could see many players wanting to have a deeper relationship with because they are so interesting. Despite these drawbacks, Tyranny is a great game and easy to recommend on this list. Coming up next, we have the game that really put Larian Studios on the map, Divinity Original Sin 2. Larian Studios was already known for their Divinity series before this game came out, but DOS 2 really cemented them as an upper echelon developer. You play as a sorcerer who has been captured and chained, preventing you from accessing magic. The game then sends you on an incredible journey of freeing yourself while also trying to determine why the magisters have turned against you. DOS 2 boasts an incredible roster of characters, some of whom are NPCs and others who can serve as party members. The voice acting is outstanding and the visual design of many characters is outstanding as well, especially the lizards you meet throughout the adventure. Like other games on the list, DOS 2 uses a unique system that doesn't lean on prior knowledge of tabletop mechanics. It's also clear and easy for new players to understand. Combat heavily utilizes elemental combos and rewards creativity, making it very addictive. Unlike some of the other games I've listed thus far, this one has a ton of replay value because there are different origin story characters you can play as. Each playthrough will allow you to witness unique content and one of them provides significantly more information about the main story. BG3 has a similar system, but treats its origin characters differently, so most of the options don't really feel like distinct runs. Divinity Original Sin 2 has a similar length to Baldur's Gate 3, so it will take you 100 plus hours to complete all the content, and it might be a bit much for some players. Also, unfortunately, the game's ending leaves a lot of players unsatisfied. 
It's not bad like Tyranny to the point that it feels incomplete, but it's clear Larian planned to do a DLC or perhaps even a sequel and just never got around to it. Now that Baldur's Gate 3 is complete and Larian has confirmed a return to their own IP, many players are clamoring for a direct sequel to this game. I definitely recommend that you go ahead and try it out. Next on the list, one of the best CRPGs of all time, Disco Elysium. This is another game that lit the CRPG landscape on fire and won a ton of Game of the Year awards. In my opinion, it's the best written game on this list and it's possibly the best written CRPG in existence, although I need to play Planscape Torment before I can confirm that. In this game, you play as a cop who wakes up in his room almost completely naked and in a drunken stupor with no memory of who he is or what happened the night before. The amnesia angle is way overdone in video games, but it works extremely well here because Disco Elysium successfully convinces the player that they are in control of someone whose mind is completely shattered. The adventure calls for you to literally piece together his life and possibly bring about some return to sanity while also solving a murder. The detective portion of this game also works very well, pitting you against a wide variety of interesting characters and scenarios. You only get one party member, but the bromance that can develop between you and Kim is flat out one of the best in gaming, and rivals relationships you can get with characters like Garrus from Mass Effect. This is another game where there's no romance, but it doesn't feel like it's missing. You can, of course, always pretend that a romance between you and Kim is blossoming, if that's your thing. The mechanics for the game are literally linked to your personality and dialogue choices, so it almost completely revolves around what kind of person you want to be. There's almost no combat in the entire game, so you don't need to worry about builds to overcome tough scenarios. Disco Elysium has a ton of replay value because many of your dialogue options during encounters revolve around what kind of person you have become, so it's a lot of fun seeing what it's like playing as a communist as opposed to a fascist. It also only takes around 20 hours to complete, making it much more digestible for new players. One of Disco Elysium's biggest strengths is also one of its biggest weaknesses. There's no combat. Again, I think this is one of the best written games on the market, but still, that won't be enough for people who prefer a more action-packed experience. A bigger issue is that the ending for the big mystery you are trying to solve is underwhelming, especially considering how epic the journey is to get there. It's not so bad that it mars the overall game, it just pretty obviously should have been done better. Regardless, this is a top 10 CRPG, and you should definitely try it out. Last, but certainly not least, we have Celasta, Crown of the Magister. This game is the purest implementation of D&D mechanics into a video game format. That might scare people who have never played D&D before, but it shouldn't because developer Tactical Adventures has done an incredible job making character creation a clear and simple process. I've played a ton of games, and to this day, Celasta is top five as far as the character creation mechanics. Everything is laid out in a manner that is helpful for people who know nothing about how D&D works. Celasta allows you to manually create all four of your party members, so unlike other games where you might be stuck with mechanics you have no interest in, you'll always have access to the exact classes you wanted. Taking the team out in the world is a blast because combat is fun and addictive. Enemies are numerous and oftentimes use good tactics that force you to think outside the box. There's a wide variety of both enemies and locations where you face them, so the gameplay loop doesn't get boring. Celasta is only 20 hours, so it's relatively easy to digest all of the content. It doesn't have any replay value, but the game has two DLCs that are both 20 hours apiece and done quite well. You can import your squad from the main game or use a different squad for each run, potentially allowing you to experience 12 classes across three different campaigns. The drawback of this game is that the graphics and writing are terrible. You can probably already tell from the footage that your party is hard to look at during cutscenes and most of the NPCs you meet are quite infantile. The writing improves with each DLC and the last one has the most solid adventure but it's still probably not going to blow you away. Despite all this, the gameplay remains incredible and Celasta is well worth experiencing. That ends my list of six CRPGs you should check out if you're brand new to the genre. Please, I would love to hear your feedback in the comments below. So let me know, did this video help you? Did you get the information you were looking for? Are some of these games new to you? And perhaps something that you might check out for yourself. If there's any information you were looking for that you didn't get from this video, 
please let me know. I answer just about all of my comments and I'll be happy to help you. Hope I see all of you in the next video. Take care.